Heavy block makers. I am Amir, and today we are going to build this. Pretty interesting, right? So here's how we are going to make it. We are going to use three main components for this project: AI Vision Blocks, Arduino, and Python programming. If you don't know about AI Vision Blocks, here is a video you can watch by clicking on the i button. Here is the explanation of the entire project. First, we will go to ai.vidblocks.com and train our AI blocks. AI blocks will get the data from ai.vidblocks.com through the internet. Now, AI blocks will pass this data to its respective ports. So if I have trained ports one to detect cats and port two to detect dogs, AI will turn on port one when I'll show cat images and port two when I'll show dogs. But this is where it gets interesting. We will hijack the data pin and connect it to Arduino. Then we will write an Arduino code to process the data we are getting and print it on serial monitor. And final step, we will write a Python code to read this data from serial monitor and simulate a button press on keyboard. Like volume up, down, play, pause, etc. And if you don't know about Python, I got you covered. Python is a high-level programming language. It is simple, readable, and most importantly, it's easy to learn. If you want to learn Python in more depth, let us know in the comments, and we might drop a new course. But for this video, whatever Python code I'm writing, I'll make sure to explain you every single line of it. So without further ado, let's build our project. First, let's do the basic connections. We are going to use all the four ports in the AI Vision blocks. For now, let's just connect four LAMP blocks as an output in AI blocks. First, we will train background so that AI will know if there is a background, I should ignore it. Write background in this input box and click on train multiple times. I am going to use this gesture for volume up, this gesture for volume down, and this gesture for play and pause. So I will train accordingly. In port one. Write volume up and click on train, train, train multiple times with different angles. Similarly for port two and three. So now our AI is trained. Let's check if it's working properly or not. Now here is the interesting part. We will remove the lamps and connect the data pins to the Arduino. This is how the connection will look like. Let's do the connections quickly. Now the connection is ready. Let's write a code to get the data from these data pins in Arduino and print it on serial monitor. So I have already written the code. I'll explain it to you very quickly. So firstly, I have created these two arrays. Arrays are like special box with compartments. It can hold values like numbers or words. We can access the value of an element if you know the index number of that particular element. Index number is like a roll number we get in our school. Just the difference is here we start from zero and not from one. If I'll call roll number zero, this element will stand up and say his name. In this case, it is seven. And if I say roll number one, this element will say his name. So in this case, it's eight. Similarly, nine or ten. And these seven, eight, nine, ten are the data pins we have used in Arduino. So coming inside setup, if you don't know what setup and loop is, I'll explain it to you. Setup is like a block of code which will execute only once. Whereas loop is a block of code which will execute itself again and again. Anyways, I am using four pins for input mode. That's why I have mentioned four times here, as you can see. And don't get nervous by seeing these numbers. These numbers just mean seven. So if ports of zero means seven and ports of one means eight, as I have explained you earlier. So ports of zero means seven. It means pin mode seven is an input. Similarly, for these three pins also. And finally, in setup mode, I have initialized serial monitor. Done with the setup mode. Now let's move on to the loop mode. 
So I have created a for loop which will start at 0 and end at 3 which means it will run 4 times. Inside this for loop it will read the value of i if the i is 0 if I put 0 over here it will read the data at port 0 which means port 7. At port 7 the value if the value is 1 it will store 1 in the same in the port values array otherwise it will store 0. And finally I will print it over here. So if the value of 0 is 0 it will print 0 over here. So if the value of port 7 is 0 it will print 0 over here otherwise it will print 1. This for loop will execute 4 times which means it will read the data from all the ports and print it over here. After the for loop completes I have written a serial dot print ln which will break the data in serial monitor and onto the new line. And finally, added a delay of 500 milliseconds to stop the execution for 500 milliseconds before executing the next loop. Done with the code. Let's write a Python code to read this data from serial monitor and perform the actions accordingly. Firstly, we need to install PySerial library. For that, I'll open command prompt and type pip install PySerial. Once installed, open up a code editor of your choice. I am opening VS Code. Once the code editor is open, create a file name main.py. After that, let's set up a serial library. Let's import the serial library like this and let's initialize it. We can initialize it by saying serial.serial .serial. and we have to, here we have to mention the port we are going to use. So I am using COM11. You have to check your port that you have used in your Arduino. Now we have to mention some settings and these are the basic configuration you can just copy paste from here. After initializing we can store this in a variable called s. So I am going to create a while loop which will execute infinite times. Inside that while loop I will read the data from the serial monitor. So s.readline and I will store that data in a variable called data. Now if I run the program it will print data continuously until I close the program by pressing Ctrl C. Also this data is not readable because it is encoded. So we will decode it by writing dot decode over here and we have to mention the character type. So we will mention UTF-8 which is default. Let's check what's the output now. Again we will press this play button. Now let's run the program again. As you can see, we can now read the data. But there is one more problem. There are empty spaces. We need to remove that. Let's do that. Do. <coughs> let's do. Let's do that quickly. Let's do that quickly. Now, if I run the program again, there will be no empty spaces. As you can see over here. Now let's convert this data into a list. List is very similar to array that I have explained earlier. So let's do that quickly. I will create a variable called data list and I will say list of data. <clears throat> this will convert the data into list and store it in a variable called data list. Let's print that variable. If I run the program again, you can see we are getting the data in an array. So now what we can do is we can check if the value at this position is 1 then we can increase the volume. If, if the value is 1 on this position then we can decrease the volume and similarly for play and pause. So I'll write a code if data list at 0 position equals to 1 then I'll print volume up. And if the data at position 1 is equals to 1, then I will print volume down. Similarly for play and pause also. Now if I run the program, 
there is an error we need to fix it first to fix this error i have written this code and placed the entire code inside that now if i'll run the program and i'll show volume up gesture it will print volume up if i'll show volume down gesture it should print volume down now instead of just printing values over here i'll make python actually increase the volume and that's pretty simple with py auto gui py auto gui is a library in python to simulate key press so first we will import py auto gui instead of just printing it over here we can write py auto gui dot press volume up and same for the volume down for volume up and volume down it's pretty simple but for play and pause it's kind of different we have to write py auto gui dot press k and as all of us know that youtube's play and pause shortcut is k so i'll write k over here also now the code is ready let's test it out again now if i run the code again and i'll show volume up the volume will get increase and if i show volume down the volume will get decrease and let's check play pause also is working or not so to check play pause i have opened this video and let's check and as you can see the video is getting played and paused but there is a problem the k button is getting pressed again and again that's why the video is getting play and pause repeatedly so to fix this issue we just need a variable called is playing and i'll assign a very boolean variable called false and here i'll check if it's playing equals to false then only proceed further also after playing after pressing the k button i make is playing is equals to true same for the pause also if is playing is equals to false if if is playing is equals to true then execute this function and make is playing is equals to false that's it for the code let's test it out the volume will increase and if i play increase the volume decrease the volume now the code is ready let's test it out Also, special mention to Farhan Hussain, one of our maker on the Bitblocks app. This project was inspired from his idea. If you also have project like this, share it on the Bitblocks app. All right, guys, that's it for the video. 